This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, May 11. Enough is enough. A group of farmers have decided to form an organization to lobby on their behalf. That was a unanimous decision taken by more than two dozen farmers following an over two hour meeting at the Wilde Gymnasium this evening. One of the spokespersons for the group, Arendel Evelyn, complained that farmers have been receiving little assistance from the government. The Ministry of Agriculture closed down. Most farmers would not even be aware that it closed down. Right? If, if BADMC closed down, well, the only reason we would know that they closed down is because we use the water, right? If BAS closed down, we wouldn't even know that BAS closed down. Yeah, okay, right? If BAS closed down, we wouldn't even know that BAS closed down, right? So we have actually been fighting, we've been living, we've been persisting, we've been existing without any of these organizations. And I am saying that if we could do it as individuals, mm -hmm. without the input of the, the organizations and the government bodies that are set up to help us, we can do it um, together, right? But we have to come together. Another spokesman for the group, Winston Alexander, appealed for urgent relief for farmers. People spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Some of them even lose it in the COVID time and not a cent back. I mean, these are things that have happened to us. And to be honest, I was uh, uh, saying, that when the water has gone up from 200% and the fertilizer have stepped up from 100%, you can imagine just in a few, we could say two or three months, these things happen while we were fighting this COVID. Something, as, as you said, my brother, there is no respect, no respect for farmers. And that has to change. And this is why we have formed this group, because we want to tell the country, and we want to tell whoever uh, that heads that are of higher power that they need to look at us again and help us in this plight. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw has denied claims of COVID-19 outbreaks at the island schools. However, she has confirmed that the Blackman and Gallup Primary School has moved away from a blended approach to a full in-person learning. In an interview with Barbados Today, Archer Banshaw declared that investigations by the Ministry of Education and the COVID-19 Monitoring Unit revealed that there was enough space on the compound at the Black Mongolop School for all students to return. Barbados Today also received reports of an outbreak of COVID-19 at the Wilkie Cumberbatch Primary. Mrs. Archer Bradshaw disclosed the school has some cases, but maintained that if the protocols are followed, the likelihood of transmission is very low. Dr. Archer Bradshaw made clear that the Ministry of Education has taken no decision to keep schools open regardless of the extent of the virus spread. Fortress Fund managers are upbeat about the island's economic growth of 11.8% for the first quarter of the year. According to Chief Investment Officer Pete Arinder, this is a step in the right direction. He, however, stressed the country must continue to focus on economic growth. Economic growth, the, the whole thing, the, all, this, all the assumptions made at the restructuring uh, and, and so on just don't hold together. So uh, it really, we... we would strongly suggest that we collectively as a country not take our, our, our eyes off that ball. The ball is growth and, and we have to collectively make sure that we generate this um, uh, somehow. He was speaking at the company's lunch and learn session on Wednesday. Meanwhile, investment director Roger Cave says the company has been investing in government bonds. I think the government of Barbados is now 12% of our high interest fund portfolio, but there's not, there's not a, a, a large range or offering of corporate bonds. So we do wish there was a, a wider spread of, of, of those. Um, so, but the, the fund, you know, as Peter said, the, the expected return now is probably somewhere in the 4% range. Fund has continued to do well. It's down, I think, 2.65% year to date due to the increases in interest rates and on the foreign part of uh, that, that bond portfolio. But we do expect you know, in the, in the months ahead that, that as those, uh, with those high yields, we should see recovery in those prices. 
Now for the latest COVID-19 update, the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory recorded 513 new COVID-19 cases, 232 males and 281 females, from the 1,697 tests conducted on Tuesday. Of the positive cases, 130 persons were under the age of 18 and 383 were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 109, while 4,174 were in home isolation. As at May 10, there were 430 COVID-19 related deaths. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, in Trinidad and Tobago, a new policing initiative, Gang Reduction and Community Empowerment, GRACE, is being rolled out to facilitate effective crime prevention strategies in crime hotspots. In addition to crime prevention strategies, the new policing initiative, Gang Reduction and Community Empowerment, or GRACE, will build mutual trust between the police service and communities, as well as address the precursors of criminal behavior. Speaking during the launch of the program, Acting Commissioner of Police MacDonald Jacobs said, trying gang-related cases takes preparation and knowledge. He said the GRACE program will provide officers with information on the basic aspects of crime prosecution and gang-related crime. Police documentation of gang affiliation and activities, legal consideration in obtaining gang records, resources that can assist in documenting gang affiliation on the part of defendants, a gang database showing all the linkages, and search warrants, and the use of various informants. Meanwhile, Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines said gang activity is rampant in the country, adding that it is a complex issue and a work in progress. It requires constant attention, constant upgrade, serious law enforcement and at the same time programs like these to ameliorate some of the harsher social and psychological conditions hoping to find out of all of this the higher and the better elements of a human being so that we will not resort to baseness on the international front Israeli forces have shot dead Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akla in the occupied West Bank she was hit by a live bullet while covering the Israeli raid in the city of Jenin. The body of Shireen Abu Akla is carried through the town of Jenin in the occupied West Bank. The veteran Al Jazeera reporter was shot dead while covering a raid by Israeli forces. Another journalist was also shot and injured. The Palestinian Health Ministry says they were hit by bullets fired by Israeli soldiers. We made ourselves clear to the army and the passers-by, indicating that we are the press. Then within seconds there was the first shot. I told them that we are being targeted, we are being shot at. I turned and found Shireen on the ground. The Israeli military says its forces came under attack in Jenin and that they fired back. There was no exchange of fire, so there is no possibility whatsoever that a Palestinian have shot Shireen Abu Akli. The Israeli army always uses these excuses to cover up the crimes they are committing against Palestinians, including Palestinian journalists. Israeli raids in the occupied West Bank have intensified in recent weeks after a series of attacks inside Israel. The Janine refugee camp has become a stronghold for resistance against the Israeli occupation. Shireen Abu Akla had worked for Al Jazeera for 20 years. Colleagues described her as brave, kind and a voice of Palestinians. I'm sure there will be lots of calls from around the world. We get a lot of support from human rights organizations, um, governments, uh, who will be looking at, at what happened here 
and, and why a journalist um, has been shot dead. Uh, journalists, you know, killing journalists, shooting the messenger is equivalent to a war crime. Mm. So we need to know what has happened. The world needs to know what has happened. Qatar's foreign ministry put out a tweet saying the Israeli occupation killed Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akhla by shooting her in the face while wearing the press vest and a helmet. She was covering their attack in Janine refugee camp. This state-sponsored Israeli terrorism must stop and unconditional support to Israel must end. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.